In our message today, we are continuing our study, The Evidences of Faith. Now, when can you know that you have received an answer when you pray? Have you as many ever raised the question in your mind after you prayed whether or not you had really believed? Well, there's no reason to remain bewildered or confused about the matter because there are certain ways that you can know if faith was present in your heart when you prayed. And we set forth some of these ways you can know this in the last message. And we repeat those for your benefit. First of all, we said, you will know it's faith present in your heart when you pray for the promises of God, when there's no longer any need for you to ask any questions about what you should do regarding your problem after you pray. Some people will say, I prayed for my healing, but I don't know whether or not I should continue to take my medicine. Well, you see... They still have questions or doubts as to whether or not they're healed. And obviously, if you don't think that you're healed, you'll want to take your medicine. And if you know you're healed, well, the last thought in your mind would be taking medicine. And so faith is heart knowledge. When you know you have the answer when you pray, then you won't need to be asking any questions about it. Now, if you have questions, go on and ask them. But as long as you're asking a question, you've not released faith yet. Because faith is knowledge that it's done because the Word of God says it's done when you believe it. All things whatsoever you ask in prayer believing, you shall receive. And so as long as you're asking questions about it, you still have doubts in your mind. Then secondly, we said you will know it's faith present in your heart when you pray, when you're no longer waiting for God to answer your prayer. Mark 11:24 What things soever you desire when you pray believe you have received them and you shall have them as long as you're relating the answer to the future then it's not faith you see faith is the evidence that you have your answer faith is the evidence of things not seen faith is the substance of that which you pray for faith always takes the answer when you pray when you pray believe you have received and you shall have it then you'll know it's faith in your heart when you pray, when you begin to speak and act in harmony with the Word of God. Now, if you say, as some do after you pray, well, I've prayed, and I'm still hoping and praying that I'll receive the answer if it's God's will. Well, that isn't faith, because God doesn't tell you to pray that way. He said, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. So faith will make a confession of what it's done. It won't ask questions, what should I do? or it won't make negative confessions concerning the condition or their circumstances. Now, fourthly, we said, when there's no need for any assurance other than the promise of God for you to know you have received the answer when you pray, then you'll know you've released faith. When you can say, God said it, I believe it, and that has settled it. It's like the centurion in Matthew chapter 8. He said to Jesus, just speak the word and my servant will be healed. And so when you know the Word of God is sufficient for you, you don't need any other assurance of vision, a dream, or some outward assurance such as feeling or improvement of your condition or whatever. When you know the Word of God is sufficient for you to receive the answer simply because you've believed and asked, then you know that's faith. Healing is based on what the Word of God says alone. It has nothing to do with the visible or feeling realm. Once you receive it in the faith realm, then God can manifest it in the feeling, the sense, or the visible realm. And then we said, faith, genuine faith, will always take the offensive against any attempt by Satan to defeat you or discourage you. You are to resist symptoms and sickness like you would resist sin. Now, one of the greatest evidences of the presence of genuine faith in your heart is your willingness to stand on God's Word alone, even though at times it will make you appear ridiculous or foolish in the eyes of the world or the institutional religious system. There are many evidences of faith, but a mature faith is never seen in the presence of pride or shame to make a good confession of the Word of God. But when laughter or ridicule or the side glances of others does not hinder a public confession of faith on your part that you have the answer even before you see it, then you'll know that's faith in your heart that you've released. Abraham confessed he had a son for 25 years. Now, the world didn't see that son, and certainly they must have thought him foolish. 
Israel marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days by faith. And I'm sure by the fifth and sixth day the people on those walls thought they were silly and began to laugh. You know, the first day they watched, probably wondering what they were going to do. They must have thought they were looking for an opening in the wall as they marched around Jericho once each day. By the second day, they probably thought Israel was trying to impress them by the size of their army or their force. But by the fifth or sixth day, I'm sure they were laughing and ridiculing, and by the seventh day, they must have been holding their sides with laughter. These people just marching around the walls and not trying to attack them. And so faith will often appear as foolishness to this world. Moses' confession of faith to Pharaoh, that God had chosen Pharaoh's slaves to be his people, his elect people, must have caused a lot of derision and laughter in Egypt. Jesus claimed to be God and then allowed himself to be crucified by those he claimed he created. And the thief on the cross asked Jesus, a man dying just like himself, ask, Remember me when you come into thy kingdom, Lord. And so faith will often appear as foolishness to those round about you. But you confess what God says and you'll know that you have it because the faith in your heart is being released through the confession of your lips. And then another evidence of faith, be willing to trust God as much as you pray. Jesus said, have faith in God. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. Be willing to trust God as much as you pray. Why? Because most people do a lot more praying than they do trusting. Now that doesn't mean you should pray less, but you should learn to trust more. Trust as much as you pray. Train yourself in the prayer of faith. Pray for those things you can believe for from the Word of God, and when you get an answer and see God does meet every prayer of faith, then go on to greater things. The principle is first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. For example, a 25-watt bulb will give a lot of light if you have it in a closet, but if you take it out into a big auditorium, it just gives a little circle of light. So learn to pray within the circle of your faith. You must learn to walk before you run. Some people try to believe for something beyond their faith. They fail. They get discouraged. Pray within the limits of your faith. Trust as much as you pray. We're not saying pray less. Learn to trust more. You see, you should never expect God to work ahead of your faith. He never works in advance of the level of your faith. James 1 tells you if you lack wisdom, you can ask God, but you're to ask in faith nothing doubting. Our faith is the channel through which God works. Many pray the wavering prayer, the doubting prayer, and wonder why they get no answer. God's answers keep pace with our belief. That's what James 1 is talking about. The answers won't arrive any faster than your willingness to believe that you have the answer when you pray. Mark 11:24. when you pray, not when you feel better, not when you see the money, not when you see the circumstances improve, then believe. No, he says, when you pray, believe you have received the answer to your petition, and you shall have it. One of the greatest evidences of faith is our willingness to wait patiently to endure until the manifestation comes. You know, a lack of trust is seen in the fact that some people just can't wait for God to work in the circumstances and do whatever is necessary to manifest that answer. They've never learned to take the answer when they pray, Mark 11:24. So a principal reason for failure in much prayer is an unwillingness to wait patiently on the Lord to work things out. I found when the answer doesn't come soon enough, many people will blunder in one of two directions. First of all, they'll either lose faith and begin to doubt, and therefore lose the answer, or they will try to help God. Now, God doesn't want your help. He wants your faith. If you could help yourself, you wouldn't be praying. The very fact you pray means that you're helpless or you need divine help in this situation. So let God work it out. We're not talking here about acting your faith. Yes, faith produces corresponding actions. But it's another thing to try to mix faith with works. God doesn't want your works or your help. He wants your faith. He wants you to believe and trust Him. Then He'll show you whatever to do if it's necessary for you to be doing something. Trying to help God's like trying to help your car stop sooner at the corner by pushing on the floor with your feet. No, that doesn't help anything at all. And then learn the secret of seeing the circumstances as God sees them. Now, how does God see them? Romans 8, 28, For we know that all things are working together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are the called according to His purpose. 
see everything as good, as being worked out to your good. And as we've said, God sees everything as now, N-O-W, now, the present, not in the past or the future, but now. That's what Jesus meant in Mark 11:24. He tells you to believe you have the answer now, when you pray, not when you see the manifestation. We must learn to distinguish between the answer to our petition and the manifestation of that answer. If someone promises to send you some money, Say you have written for money from your parents and they promise to send you the money to college where you need it. Now, it's going to take some time for that money to arrive in the mail. Well, you believe you have received. You believe you have it before you see the answer manifested. And if the parents wanted the child to learn to trust and to have patience, they might delay mailing that money for a week just so that they would teach them a little patience. Well, whatever the reason, this is the same when we pray. Often there are circumstances that require or cause a delay, and we are to believe we have received when we pray. God sees the answer now. He says, when you pray, believe you have the petition, and then you shall have it. Now that is future, shall have, future tense. It may be a moment or a month or whatever, but believe you have received when you pray. See the answer as God sees it, as now. Learn the secret of seeing circumstances as God sees them. God sees every circumstance as possible, nothing impossible. Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, nothing would be impossible unto you. You see, faith brings everything into the realm of the possibility. Most people are defeated because they're looking at circumstances or their problems from their finite viewpoint, and then subconsciously they carry this fear over to God, and they limit Him because they know they are limited. It's never a question, can God? It's just a question of, can you believe? It's like the father who had the demon-possessed son that Jesus' disciples could not deliver. He brought him to Jesus and said, Lord, if thou canst do anything, help us. And Jesus said, in effect, in reply, if I can do anything. No, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Now, learn the secret of releasing your faith as you pray. Put these things into practice we've shared with you. Some people will pray and get up with the feeling that nothing was accomplished. Why? Because they got on their knees and just spoke words out of their head. There was no expectation, no determination, no faith, no determination to settle that matter before they got up off their knees, releasing that by faith to God as they prayed. How do you release your faith as you pray? Make a definite, specific claim of what you need. The prayers of some people are so general they can't release faith. They pray, for example, Lord, I have many problems and many needs in my home, at church, at work, and I believe you can work all these things out if it's your will. Somehow straighten out this mess. You can't release faith on such an indefinite prayer. Determine the will of God ahead of time and then believe as you pray.